Hello, um, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to roll an object around. Um, so in this example we're going to be rolling a ball around and um, we're going to look at how to use um, or how to apply force and gravity. So in the previous tutorials um, we looked at how to control objects or um, move objects around, rotate objects, change their size um, and we looked at how to make that happen in a game using scripts um, so get an object to move around on its own and also how to have uh, input in the game so using um, the keyboard using key press events to um, move an object or transform an object um, or using mouse movement as well so we've looked at how to transform objects using scripts we looked at how to um, implement user input using the keyboard and the mouse and in this tutorial we're going to go further with that so we're going to move objects around um, but we're going to start working with force and start working with things like gravity when an object jumps so just show you what I've got in this scene I've got this simple terrain here um, so it's got some trees and hills it's got water over here um, I've got um, a directional light and I've got a main camera which is looking on this sphere here. Okay, so I'll just move around this scene. I've got this sphere or this ball, it's got a brick texture and then there's a camera that's, um, and you can see the camera preview here. Um, if we go to play, the camera is looking straight on, straight towards that um, ball. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to have that ball, um, we're going to make this game so we can roll the ball around backwards and forwards left and right so we'll actually be rolling not just moving um, and we'll also have it so that we can um, make the ball jump up and then it will fall back down so we can work with um, force and gravity there okay so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the sphere here in the hierarchy and um, in the inspector panel we need to add a new component. So click on add component from the inspector panel and it's under physics and we're gonna use rigid body, but you can just search for it as well. So you can start typing in rigid and we're gonna use rigid body, not rigid body 2D. This is a 3D game, so we're gonna use rigid body. Click on that and now you'll see, we don't need to touch anything here yet, but you'll see that there's a whole heap of different things you can play around with like mass, drag, angular drag, use gravity, which is turned on, um, and collision detection. So I'm going to leave that as is. And, and now that we've got the rigid body component there, we need to add a new script. So I'm going to go into the scripts folder. I'm going to right click and click on create and click on C sharp script. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script. Okay. I'm going to call this script move okay all right um, so what we need to do is we need to add the move script to the sphere so I'm going to drag that script onto the sphere and let go and now if we go to the sphere um, scroll down we've got the move scripts there attached and we can double click on move to open up that script and start working with it Okay, so that will open up Mono Develop and we'll start um, adding the code to that script. All right, just wait for it to load. Here we go. All right, so where we've got using Unity Engine, using System Collections, we want to leave that as is, but just underneath that, we need to add another line, a require component. So inside square brackets, add require component. Okay, and then inside brackets after that, just normal brackets, in type of. Okay, and then in again in brackets, we're going to put rigid body. Okay, and we'll close off those two brackets and then close off the square brackets. All right, so it's important that we add that because we're going to be using the rigid body component in this script. Okay, we've got public class move. Um, Underneath that, we're going to create, or just inside this class, we're going to create some public variables, and they're all going to be of the float data type. Okay, so we're going to add public float 
x force. Right. Um, we're going to make that equal to 10.0, and it's a float, so we need to add an f there on the end. And close that off there with a um, semicolon. Right, we're going to add public float y force. Or well, actually, we'll add z force first. So we'll just be working with the x and z axes to start with. So z force, and uh, we're going to also make that 10.0 f. And we can change these variable values later. But because we've made this a public variable, it means that we don't need to go back to the code and change the values here. We can just do it straight inside Unity. Okay. So we've got x and z there first. And um, so just to start with, we're going to work with just rolling the ball around on those axes. All right, now we need to, um, we can just ignore the start uh, method here. We don't need to delete it, but we won't really be using that. So we're going to go to the update method. And inside the update method, we're going to um, add some code. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to um, add the code for the x-axis first. So um, we're going to have public Oops, actually we're not going to make this a public variable. We'll just make it float. So we'll make float x equals 0, 0.0f. All right, I've got that. Um, so float x equals 0, 0.0f. Underneath that, we're going to add an if statement. So just before I do that, just going to add a, a comment here. This is for the x-axis movement. Okay, so this all this code here that we're adding now is firstly for the x-axis. It's for that the movement on the x-axis. So we're going to add an if statement here. So if input dot and we're going to have some keyboard input here. If input dot get key key code um, capital C yeah key code dot a and then just close those brackets off there. All right, so inside this if statement, firstly, the condition is that if the um, A key is being pressed on the keyboard, then we're going to do this. We're going to do X equals X minus X force. All right. So if input get key, key code A. Um, so in other words, if the A key is being pressed on the keyboard, then X is equal to X minus x force, okay? So um, the x variable is set to zero. Every time um, this update method is called, every single frame, the x variable is gonna be set to zero. But when the a key is pressed, because that's the a key on the keyboard is representing left, it's going to move the ball left, it's gonna roll it left. So it's gonna make the x variable, it's going to minus X force from the X variable. So it'll start moving left. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. It'll make more sense if it doesn't make sense yet. So we've got that. All right, that's our if statement there. Let's see. All right, what we need to do now is we need to add another if statement. So if this time it's going to be the, um, uh, the other key, for because we're going to be moving right, it's going to be the D key. So if input dot get key key code dot D, close those brackets off. All right, so in other words, this first if statement here is for when the A key is being pressed, so when you want it to move the ball left, and this if statement is for when the D key is being pressed, so when you want to move the ball right. So this time, um, for the action inside this if statement, we're going to have x equals x plus x force. All right. So all of that is for the x-axis movement. Now we're going to work on the y-axis movement. So I'll go down inside this update method. I'll just put a comment here. So this is for the y-axis movement. All right. So we'll make a... Um, Sorry, this is for the z-axis, not y. We'll be doing the y-axis soon. So this is for the 
um, z axis here. All right, so this is for moving forwards and for moving backwards. All right, um, so we're going to create a float variable called z, and that's going to be 0, 0 0.0f. There, it's a float, and it's going to be pretty much the same as what we did here, but we're going to be working with the z axis instead of the x axis. So we're going to have another if statement. Uh, so we're going to have if input dot get key and in bracket have key code dot s. So this is going to be for moving down or sorry, moving backwards. So um, rolling the ball back towards the camera. So if get key key code um, dot s close those brackets off inside these curly brackets here. We're going to add the action if that condition evaluates to true. So we're going to have z equals z minus z force. All right. Then we'll add another if statement here. So have if input dot get key and in brackets again key code dot w. All right. So if the w key is being pressed, then we want the ball to roll forward. All right. So this time we're going to have z equals z plus z force. All right. So. Just to go over that again, just briefly, inside the update method, we've got all this code here for the x-axis movement, so the control movement left and right. So we have an x variable here to float set to 0.0, .0 to begin with, but if the A key is pressed, it's going to roll the ball to the left on the x-axis. So it means that x is going to be equal to x minus the x force, which is um, 10.0 f 10.0 as a float okay but if the key the d key is pressed and it's going to move right so x is going to be equal to x plus x force and then again it's pretty much the same for the z axis movement except we're moving forwards and backwards so s key it will move it um, back and roll the ball back and w key if that's being pressed it will roll the ball forward all right so we've set that up now what we need to do inside this update method is we need to add get component and then inside these angle brackets we need to put rigid body okay bodies um, lowercase and then open close brackets there dot add force capital F for force and in brackets we're going to have x comma y comma z oops y comma z okay close those brackets semicolon on the end there um, that all looks right to me okay um, now you notice here we've got y is red so we haven't actually added y yet so um, what we'll do is we've set this up for rolling the ball forwards and um, backwards and rolling left and right. Now we're going to add the Y axis movement. So we might as well do that now, otherwise we'll get messages about Y not being used. All right, so this is for the Y axis movement. So just adding a comment there to explain what's going on here. So now we're going to create a float called Y and that's also going to be equal to 0, 0.0 add an F there and then we'll add a if statement here we only need one because we're not going to allow the ball to move um, down um, we're only going to allow it to move up to jump and then gravity will take place and um, bring it down automatically so I'm going to add if input dot get key down key code dot Space. So you can use whatever key you want, but we're going to use a space key here to um, have the ball jump. Close those brackets, and then we're going to add the action that will occur when this condition is true. And that's basically y equals um, y equals y force, which we haven't created yet. So 
going to have y equals y force. Okay, so what we'll need to do is go back up here. We've got a value, a value of variable for x force, z force. We need to add one for y force as well. So public float y force, which is going to be a lot greater than um, the x and z force. We'll make it about um, 500. Point zero and add an F on there because it's a float. All right, now you can see why here is no longer red because we're using that um, variable. All right, now just before we test this, just quickly go over it again. So we've got require component and we're, gonna, we're using the rigid body component. So it's important to have that line in there outside all of these classes. And then inside this class, um, the move class, we've got three variables created here. We've got and they're all floats. One is called X force, one is called Z force, and one is called Y force. X and Z, X is for moving left and right, Z is for moving backwards and forwards, and Y is for jumping or moving up. X and Z force are equal to 10. Well, Y force um, needs a greater value that's equal to 500. Okay, we're not using the start method. There's nothing inside there. We'll go down to the update method, and we've got code here, which is for the X axis movement. So we've got a float of x equals 0, 0.0f, and if the A key is um, pressed to roll the ball left, then um, we're going to have x equals x minus x force. So it's going to um, make x a negative value depending on the force um, that's applied. So um, it's the same for right. When you press the D key, it will roll right. So x the um, x-axis variable would become a positive value, so it's going to move right. Same for the z-axis, we've got very similar code here, except we've got different keys, s and w, s for rolling back, w for rolling forward, and we're working with the z-axis there. And then lastly, we've got the y-axis movement, so we've got another float value here for y, and um, y, when the space key is pressed, y will be equal to y force, so it will just jump up, and then um, the gravity will bring it back down eventually. So the last thing that we just need to add is this bit here, get component, rigid body, add force, and then in brackets, x, y, and z. Okay, um, so because we're using all three axes there, we need to have x, y, and z in there. That's it. Um, can't see any typos or errors, so we'll just save that, command s, and we can go back into Unity, and um, just wait for that to update. Clear these messages on the console and we'll test it. Let's see if that works, which it should. All right, so there we go. Notice that this time, now that we've got this script, which has um, gravity, the ball automatically dropped onto the terrain. So if we just stop that again, the ball is in, it's just hanging here in the air, but as soon as we click on play, Gravity brings that ball back down. Now, if I press W, the ball rolls forward. If I press S, it rolls back. And if I press, oops, I'm just bring it forward a bit. If I press A, it moves left, and D, it moves right. But if you try this yourself, um, in the previous tutorials, we had code that allowed a an object to move around. But as soon as you let go of the key, it would stop moving. So if you were pressing A for it to move left. As soon as you left, let go of the A key, it will stop moving left. But because we're working with force here, if I hold it down, it will keep moving. As soon as I let go, it will sort of slow down, but it still is moving a little bit. So press D, it will keep moving for a little bit, and then it will gradually sort of come to a slow stop. And if I press A, I can sort of bring it back a bit. So I've got force. We can hold down two keys at the same time to get it to move around. Um, so it's just rolling around. Now, if I press the space bar, it should jump, and it comes back down. Okay, if I press it a little bit, it jumps. If I hold it down, it jumps up. Okay, we can move and jump at the same time like that. We can, um, let's bring it back, press S. We can double jump, so I can press it twice to double jump. Okay, but gravity brings it back down onto your terrain. So that's pretty cool. That's um, basically how to move an object around or roll an object around um, 
using the rigid body component and how to use force and gravity. Okay, and the great thing is because we're using public variables here, if we go to sphere, we can change the mass of the object. Um, so at the moment it's set to one, we could change that to five. And um, now because the mass has increased, it's actually a lot harder to move it. It's a lot harder to slow it down. So you can see if I press A to move it left, it's now starting to move, but it's still sort of, it's a lot harder to control because the mass has been increased. So bring it back down to one. And now it's a lot easier to go backwards and forwards. All right, it doesn't have to slowly come to a stop and change direction. Same with drag, you can alter that in angular drag um, and you can turn gravity off, but that's pretty cool. So all of those changes I've just made there, um, which I just changed back, but if I change the mass value there, it wouldn't actually save because I'm still playing the game. So if you want to permanently change that value, you need to stop playing the game and you can change the value in there and save it. Okay, um, so I'm not sure what this message is coming up for. Oh, I've, I've got a script on the main camera, which I've um, I deleted before. So that's why that message is coming up. Just remove that component and that message should go away. There we go. So that's nothing to do with this code that we've just used. So that's it. That's how to um, roll a ball around, um, use force and gravity. What we can do now quickly is we can just see how it can interact with other objects. So what we might do is go up to game object and create a new 3D object, a cube. And what we'll do is we'll just move this cube around um, and just move it there underneath the sphere. And um, we'll change its scale. So we'll scale it up a bit on the X and Z axes and we'll um, maybe make it 0 0.2 there on the Y axis. So just scale it so that it's now a rectangular prism rather than a cube. And we can put it maybe about there somewhere. Um, just go to that camera and see what it looks like in the view. Might actually just move it forward a bit. Um, let's move that forward. Have a look at that again. And maybe just move it a little bit that way. A bit more. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty cool. So now we've got this um, sort of panel here. And if we play it, now we can interact with this. So you could create some sort of um, game where you've got to roll the ball around and there might be different traps, different holes that it could fall down. You could make a pinball game um, using this code pretty easily. And then you could have like um, some um, collision detection as well to detect when it's hitting different objects. So I can roll off and I can, um, so there it is, there it is, we can go underneath. Okay, um, I could try and jump back onto it. Whoops, gone too far. <laughs> there it is. So maybe make it a little bit smaller than that, but there we go. All right, so you can interact with different other 3D objects. All right, that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll look at how to control um, objects from scripts that are on, uh, attached to other objects. So, um, for example, we could control that sphere, but we could control it with a script that's attached to another object, not the actual sphere. So we'll look at how to do that in the next tutorial. Um, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.